Hello and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband and our 10th year anniversary series. Okay, so here we go. What we're going to do is we're going to declare war against the Kurgit Khanate. As I detailed in the previous episode, I feel like this kind of makes sense. Because here's the thing. I would love to be able to eliminate the Rodox, of course. I mean, who wouldn't, right? I mean, you know, the longer we leave them, the, well, the more formidable they are going to become. However... They are very far away. I'm not sure if I really want to trek all the way down to the Rodox territory when they're not even at war against us. They might decide to declare war against other people. They might even be at war against other people as we speak. And so as a result, I'm kind of thinking, you know what? Let's just focus on the Kurgits instead. So this fellow right here, he was basically just in my vicinity. And I thought to myself, okay, we're going to do a little bit of damage to him. Let's see if we can actually actually win the day against him because who knows maybe we won't be able to i mean as we know the kurgits are very good in field battles or at the very least they should be very good i mean <laughs> it's been a while since i've actually fought against horse archers in warband in comparison to bannerlord so the uh, horse archer ai might be less good than i remember let's just say that because the last time that I fought some horse archers, it was in Bannerlord, and, well, they're always going to be pretty good. You know, they're going to be pretty good. They're going to stay away from you, they're going to do as much damage as they can, and then they're just going to headshot you in the face and run on. And that's pretty much it. Whereas these guys, not sure if they're that good at doing that, because it seems to me like what they do is they go in a straight line, they shoot you a little bit. Sometimes, yeah, look at this guy. Look at this guy right here. This is exactly what he should be doing. Actually, wait a minute. I think he's running away, actually. Never mind. I think he is running away. All right. <laughs> uh, that, uh, that's not really helping things, sir. You're not really helping me to prove my point that horse archers are actually not too bad. But apparently they are having some pretty big issues at defeating us. Which is actually giving me a lot of confidence at this point. Because I'm thinking to myself, what if we have some issues fighting them on the field, well, then it's not going to be that difficult to take their uh, their thieves and things. Because obviously, you know, if they're good on the field, then they're going to be pretty bad in a siege defense, for example. This is obviously just for example. Um, but that's the thing. It seems as though they're not actually that good on the field either, which is very telling. That basically says to me they are a free win at this point. I don't know whether we are just getting lucky with who we're fighting at the moment because as you can quite clearly tell he actually has some Kurgit Lancers, he's got some veteran horse archers and so on but from what from what I remember about the various statistics of the horse archers in particular and the Lancers themselves is that they are generally a little bit less good than their Mm, should we say mounted counter counterparts? I mean, obviously not in the not in the case of the horse archers because they are the best horse archers in the game, of course. But I'm talking about the lancers. If we look at the lancers, it's very very different in the way that they are statted, and they also have worse gear than the Swadian knights, for example, or the Saranid Mamluks. So those those types of units are just going to run rings around the Kurgit lancers. However, the lancers do have one thing that they completely beat everyone about and that is basically the speed at which they can level up because the time it takes for you to level a swadian knight you can probably get two kurgit lancers maybe even three i'm not sure how i'm not sure how the the pace is but from what i remember it's very easy to level up kurgit units so that's something to bear in mind if you are wanting to play with the Kurgits, you know, generally. They are going to be very flimsy, they're going to be very fragile, but they're going to be super easy to level up. So if you want a lot of units in a hurry, it's probably a good idea to, you know, go for some Kurgits. If you want to, you know, if you want to put, um, <laughs> put your hopes on their survivability, which, as I say, is not that good. Anyway, let's go and see what Kudan is. It seems to be a, a ladder town, so this is actually not bad. Kind of, um, kind of I'm, I'm, I'm reserving judgment until I see how the layout actually is. Ooh, nice ladder. 
bad battlements, li a nice ladder. That's basically what's going on here. Because here's the thing. You see that at the top there? That is a very, very narrow entry entryway. And we're going to have a pretty big problem actually even getting in here. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Oh, oh no, are you serious? Ah, oh. okay, yeah. That kind of thing can happen. Yep. It happens to me a lot, those kinds of uh, those kinds of things, but I was very much hoping that I'd be able to avoid it this time because I thought, oh, maybe I can, you know, jump up and I might be able to get on top of the battlements on the left side over there, and then maybe I'll be able to get behind enemy lines and do some good damage. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Oh, well, never mind. As I say, these guys are probably going to be a pretty easy win for us. I don't think we're going to have too many difficulties with them in general when it comes to sieges. Um, but obviously it very much depends on if they come at us with large amounts of vassal units. Because let's face it, if they have, I don't know, if they have their martial call for, I don't know, three, four vassals and they have around 400, 500 units, it's going to be difficult nevertheless. So, you know, uh, in, in that case, it's kind of a situation where we have to either decide, do we want to fight them on the field or do we want to fight them in the siege? Well, obviously, it's probably going to be best to fight them in the siege, but that is if they actually do it, because some of the time they don't actually go ahead with the sieges in Warband. They can be a little bit hesitant, but that very much depends on what is currently in the, gar in the garrison. Because as we saw in one of the previous episodes, I was actually def defending at Yuruma Castle. I was inside the walls, and King Yaraglek, you know what he decided to do? Nothing at all. Yeah, he basically just stood there outside, doing nothing, until I left. And then I left, and then he went straight on in, and then I went, I went in after him, obviously, as you might expect. But that just basically holds true with any singular force in the game because if they are holding back if they're not proceeding into the siege it's probably because you are either inside there like i was or there's something else preventing them from doing so Borcha's getting a bunch of kills i gotta say really really nice to see that actually i'm i'm really worried about falling again so i'm kind of just trying to very slowly uh, get up here. I uh, it, Apparently there is no real point in me even doing this because the enemy has basically died they're, 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 they're all dead as you can quite clearly see. There's only 14 of them remaining and uh, There you go. So we've taken Kudan and that means That the next sieges we're gonna have to do one of them. I know for certain is a nightmare siege Oh, yes, I know I know it's going to be bad. It's going to be very bad indeed, but it's going to be entertaining for you, potentially, because you're going to get to see the horrible, horrible pain that I am going to go through. Uh, I can only hope that it's not going to be that bad, but um, I mean, if it's owned by the Kurgits, I can only hope that it's going to be kind of easy, just purely for the fact that they are the ones defending it. But I'm very worried about it, to be honest. I'm really kind of concerned. Anyway, I'm just going to take some step bandits. Uh, they become Kurgits. Not a big fan of that. What about the Tega bandits here? They become Vagias. All right, I guess I will just take those instead. And then we'll just move on. All right, so we have now taken this. So here's the thing. Um, someone actually mentioned in the comments, which I actually didn't realize um, about this. This is actually a pretty cool uh, little tidbit of information. Um, as far as I'm aware, if you call for a campaign, the only vassals that are going to join you are the ones that have a higher relation than negative five. Someone mentioned this in the comments, and I, I gotta say thank you for this, because that makes a whole bunch of sense now, because I think to myself, whoa, that really highlights exactly what has been happening with me, because some of these people just don't even bother to help me, because they don't have enough relation with us. It makes sense, right? Yeah, it makes sense. Anyway, uh, we've now gotten some relation with Nuas. Hopefully he's actually still going to stay with us. I mean, it's a bit problematic, isn't it? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know whether he's actually going to do that, but we can just hold our breath and just maybe just, I don't know, cross our fingers and hope that he stays with us. But anyway, Kudan has now been taken. And this over here, Nelag Castle, I believe is the Nightmare Siege. 
So I am a bit worried about it, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do. I'm actually wondering whether I should strike straight towards Ikima instead, but I'm going to go to Sungetcha Castle along the way and we'll see what happens. Ah, there's actually another, another Kurgit vassal here. Um, yeah, okay, we're going to have to wait until he's done with his little fight. Uh, it's almost done, there we go, and then we're just going to be going straight on in and fighting him yeah th th now this is this is absolutely perfect to be honest like getting these kinds of vassals into a into an engagement just after they have finished fighting some bandits i mean really that is absolutely perfect timing on our part really really surprising that we were able to do that but there you go anyway let's see if we can actually take out a couple of people here oh yeah by the way i think my horse is actually lame at the moment so I am gonna have to do something about that because otherwise we are just gonna be moving way too slowly as you can quite clearly tell my horse is really not flying along we're just gonna put the horse in the inventory uh, for it to recover itself and then hopefully we'll be able to you know use it once again but I do believe I have a Corsa or something like that in my inventory so it should be perfectly fine for me to swap it out all right, so that was a pretty easy win for us, and as you can see, we basically took no casualties whatsoever. Anyway, we do have some more Taker Bandits there, but of course I'm probably not going to be taking them for obvious reasons, don't have any space in actual fact. And uh, yeah, we do need to actually level up Borcher in a second as well, so I'm going to very quickly just do that before we head on. Let's see what he has for us. Ooh, yeah, there we go, we finally got him to the next point in spotting let's actually get him some more trainer skill there we go that is looking real good actually because now we are going to be able to level up our forces just that much faster if we had more companions that actually got on with each other which there are that's the thing there are two more companions as i've said multiple times already i'd love to be able to get them but i just haven't been able to find them yet so <laughs> not entirely sure what's going on with that anyway Ooh, look at this. They have 37 lances in here. This is a siege tower. We're going to just bite the bullet and just go for it. We're just going to try to take the siege tower castles and towns whenever we see them. Rather than leaving them for the last. Because in those kinds of situations, I kind of just want to get it over with. Rather than leaving it all the way to the end. Uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's going on here? Oh, the Vajirs are now joining the Saranid Sultanate. Okay, some of them are joining the Saranid Sultanate. Okay, that's absolutely fine. No problem at all. Oh, you guys went in way too soon. Yeah, they went in way too soon. If they had waited just a little bit longer, they would literally have a massive army breathing down our, our neck. And uh, they, they, would, they would probably have a, a certain victory on their hands. Or it would be a very difficult one for me at least. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to actually swap out my horse. Mm, great, I knew I forgot something. Oh well, never mind, it's fine, it's fine. Because here's the thing, if this was a large battle, I would be worried. But this is a, a medium size, you know, medium sized battle. Shouldn't be too, too bad. And we can also eliminate enemies' horses relatively easily actually i feel like sometimes having a slow horse actually helps you to be a little bit more um uh, i don't know a little bit more proficient with with doing damage i know it sounds a bit counterintuitive of course because you know you want as much damage well much as much speed to translate into damage as you possibly can i just received a couch lance are you serious wow all right let's tell my forces to charge in now I'm, I'm basically letting the Kurgits have the uh, initial attack. The, the main reason why I'm doing that is because then they can run into all of my forces. They can get slowed and they can basically just get absolutely cut down. That is the main reason why I would do that. Generally, you probably don't want to take advantage of an enemy's mobility unless you have much faster units at least in my opinion because obviously if you're going to be dealing with enemy kurgits and you yourself are also a relatively fast moving force let's say you have a bunch of kurgits as well i don't know maybe it's some kind of civil war going on you know let's say that but in those cases if you have a faster faster army then by all means take the offense but for me personally i have so many nord huskals so many people that are actually going to be moving so much slower than the enemy 
that it's just not going to make sense. It's going to make so much more sense to just hang back, do as much damage as we can with our archers, and indeed have our enemies run straight in to our husk house, because they are the ones that are going to be doing a lot of damage. And, uh, well, I'm just going to run around doing a little bit of interference here and there, but you can see we have already eliminated a significant portion of the enemy, and we really don't even have to worry about them. Oh, hello. <laughs> yes, he's trying to he's trying to get me. He's trying to get me with the couch lancing. And I actually wonder, is that... No, 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 no. Never mind, never mind. I was actually going to say, is this a, uh, is this a lancer? And I was thinking to myself, surely not. The lancer would have done so much more damage to me beforehand. There are some lancers on the field, of course, but not the one that hit me with the lance. Uh, hmm. Yeah, you know what? I'm actually going to tell everyone to hold position here. It's one of those times, you know. It's one of those times when I just want to get my forces consolidated a little bit extra here. Because if I don't do that, they're just going to get scattered. And that's generally what horse archers do quite a lot of the time. I actually feel like maybe Warband AI horse archers might be slightly more... Mm, they don't work as well together that, than the Bannerlord ones. The Bannerlord ones obviously work very well in formation. But if you want to scatter your forces and if you want to make the enemy just run after you in all kinds of different directions, then the Warband AI really does make a pretty significant difference because you you, you saw the battle map just a second ago, right? Yeah, you know, a couple of moments ago. All my forces were all over the place, you know? They were all running after some separate horse archer in some distant corner of the battlefield, and that in general actually weakens us by such a significant amount that I've seen times where I've been playing in, you know, mods like Pendor or even in native, where my forces have just been running around after one horse archer. And that one horse archer has basically made it so that our front line just completely evaporated. And that can make things extremely uncomfortable. Because then you've got no one to defend your archers, you know what I mean? Uh, that happens way too often, but that's the reason why I wanted to consolidate our forces and then do another charge in. Alright, so it seems like I'm going to need to run away from Sangetra Castle. Unfortunately, we had another 12 hours left on our Siege Tower build. I actually thought that we were going to be done much, much quicker, but unfortunately that was not the case. These, th This guy actually wants to fight? Come on, come on then, come on then. You want to fight me? Yeah, 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 that's what I thought. Alright, yeah, so he's running away now. And Sanya Khan is here as well, so obviously he's the uh, he's the leader of the Kurgits. Um... I'm actually wondering, should we should we stay in Kudan and actually try and eliminate the Kurgits, or shall we go? You know, no, you know what? I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna play it safe. Gonna play it a bit more. You know, a bit smarter, shall we say? Oh wow. Okay, that's uh, that's actually kind of bad. Yeah, that is actually kind of bad. Okay, Swadians have declared war against us. I was very much hoping that they would leave us alone for a little bit of time. I, I didn't need like a, a massive amount of time, but just a little bit of time for us to try and um, murder the Kurgits as much as we could. But uh, yeah, okay, now we are in a spot of bother. So what we're going to have to do, at least in my opinion, we will probably have to go back to the, back to Wercheg and maybe send an emissary to Sanyar Khan, but the problem with sending an emissary is that he's probably not gonna be in a talking mood. He will be very unlikely to accept any kind of peace agreement, just purely for the fact that we declared war against him, probably, and obviously he is thinking that he's gonna be quite powerful against us, and he's probably gonna be able to gain a pretty significant amount of territory in the process of attacking us. So that is going to be a bit of a problem. And, and of course, I cannot send an emissary to King Harlaus. He's in much, way, way too much of a strong position. So it's going to be very difficult for us to get him to agree to anything either. So my best shot is forcing the Kurgits into some kind of peace agreement, which means taking a huge amount of their territory, as much as I possibly can handle, and then sending for an emissary or forcing them in, into sending me their very own peace agreement. That's the only thing I can really do. 
So, in the meantime, <laughs> we might have some issues with the Swadians. They might, uh, they might take a bunch of my, uh, bunch of my fiefs. And if that happens, then it happens. We, we can't really do much about it. We can't defend in multitudes of different directions at once. Um, so, yeah. Oh well, never mind. If I knew this was coming, which I of course didn't, I thought to myself, yeah, we, we might get, you know, we might get attacked by the Swadians. That was the most likely enemy that we were going to face. But then I thought, well, if we do, then, well, I guess we just have to kind of deal with it. Uh, unfortunate. Um, there's also something that I want to bring to your attention here. Look at this, um, look at this wonderful invisible wall. Yeah, I'm walking into the invisible wall right now. Because I obviously want to. I want to get. I want to jump down there, but unfortunately, that is not possible. Do you think I can shoot from here? Yeah, you can actually shoot from here, but you can't fall off. Yeah, I think that's a little bit weird. Not entirely sure why they would have done this, but okay. I mean, if I want to jump down, then I want to jump down, right? I don't think I should be restricted from jumping. Oh well, never mind. Uh, what can I actually do here? Mm. My archers are down there, by the way. I've started to place them down there in a hold position. Command, that seems to make a, a little bit of a difference. Ah, oh, this is this is very frustrating. Okay, you know what? I'm actually going to go around the side. Let's try and go around the side. Maybe we can do a little bit of damage to the enemy from here. Are you serious that there, there, there are invisible walls all, all, all along here? Oh, uh, okay. Um, all right. Well, I'm trapped. There's not much I can do. That is, uh, that is very sad. What if I jump out? There's, there's no invisible wall. Are you serious? So all the way at the top there, no invisible wall where I took massive damage, but the battlements have an invisible wall. All right. I don't understand their thought process in regards to that, but okay. <laughs> I guess we'll just we'll just go with it, right? We'll just go with it. Okay. Anyway, uh, we've got some things here. Nothing really to write home about, as you might expect. Lord Nelag is going to get this castle just purely for the fact that it it is his castle. I think that's that's quite funny. So Nelag Castle actually is not the nightmare siege that I thought it was going to be. So that's kind of a bit weird as well, because I actually thought it was going to be the nightmare siege. You know, the one the one where you go into the courtyard. And uh, everyone shoots you from all manners of directions. Yeah, that would that would have been pretty awful. Okay, 173 in here. This is another siege tower. We can't deal with siege towers right now because the uh, Kurgits are very highly active in this area. And we need to be a bit careful of that. This guy is going to run into Ikema, as you might expect. All right. Mm. All right, I'm going to go for Tolga then. I'm going to go for Tolga. And wait a minute. Mm, I'm actually gonna you know what I might defend I might do a defense let's have a look 129 really you only have 129 okay yeah sure I'm just gonna fight him then yeah Kudan has been lost that's absolutely fine I had no problem at all with that I 100% I assumed that that was gonna be the case but we just need to keep an eye out in case Wercheg or one of our other towns comes under siege. Because here's the thing. I can actually, now that I'm a little bit closer to um, to Kudan, I can go straight back there right now and just force them into a surrender, pretty much. Almost instantly, I think. So if I, if I actually do that, um, then we will have it again. And then I can just, I don't know, defer appointment of a lord or I can give, um, you know, someone else the ownership and then we can get some more relation with them and so on and so forth so maybe that would be not so bad you know maybe it's a nice little way for us to farm some relation with some people who knows but what i do know is that we really just need to eliminate this fellow hopefully my horse isn't actually going to die I, it seems like it took a bit of a battering at the start here not a big fan of that but can't do much about it can we eliminate this fellow no they are very good. I gotta say, they are very good at keeping away. Especially if you are, you know, let's just say you're playing an infantry-based character. Oh my. I, I would feel very, very sorry for you at this point if you were playing an infantry-based character. Because it's going to be extremely difficult to pin down any of these horse archers. And that's actually the reason why my... Well, uh, I don't want to use a, a word as strong as hatred. But uh, they are very frustrating to play against in certain situations but as it stands right now it seems like everything is going rather nicely for us 
And uh, yeah, again, they have just completely scattered all of our forces, as you can see. So what I'm actually going to do is we're going to probably tell my forces to consolidate around here, around this sort of central position. And then that's going to draw all of the horse archers in, because, of course, if they want to continue doing damage, they're going to need to be close. You know, they need to be close to us. And then we'll send our cavalry after them and hopefully they'll be able to take them down. Yeah, the collisions are kind of frustrating as well to deal with in this game because I don't know whether you've noticed so far, but when uh, when when my horse gets close to another horse and they slow down ever so slightly, it basically uh, causes kind of like a ripple effect. To... Well, um, yeah, okay. Um... <laughs> Oh, uh, why? I, I I don't even know. I, I, how does that kind of thing actually happen? Because from my perspective, I'm running around. I'm very randomly in some place on the battlefield. I'm not thinking... Well, I'm not thinking anything, really. I'm just thinking, hey, you know what? Let me just do some damage to this guy. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Lance appears. Yes, a wild Lance appears. He wishes to fight. He sends out Dragonite. Yeah, very good, very good. Yeah, uh, do you get that? <laughs> do you get the reference? Oh, that's a bit of an esoteric reference right there, considering it requires a lot of leaps. Uh, yes, well, whatever the case. Um, yeah, thankfully, due to Jeremus's first aid skill, I am not having too many difficulties here, but... Ah, oh, that's a that, that's a classic moment right there. That is an absolute classic because in these situations when you get hit by a by a lance like that, right smack dab in the face, and then you just think to yourself, "Wow, what did I do to deserve that?" I don't know. Leading leading the enemy faction, I guess. <laughs> right? Yeah, leading the enemy faction. Anyway, the enemy is about to be taken out, and we well, it's just a matter of time. The magic wonders of the enemy vassals never cease to amaze. Yes, indeed. Mm. I think you can kind of tell where we are right now. I'm inside Kudan, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't know why they did that. I don't know why they did that. So basically, what happened was I finished up my with my you know with my battle in the, you know in the uh, I don't know snowy reaches of uh, the nearby surroundings of. Nelag Castle, and then we came over here to Kudan because I wanted to, well, take it back. And I said to you in the previous battle, I said, oh yeah, it's going to be easy. I can just go in there. I can just force them to surrender. It's going to be so, so simple, right? Yeah, not so much, not so much. Because what actually happened, I came across, you know, Kudan, took a look inside the garrison. There's 175. Oh yeah, there's 175 enemies. And I think to myself, how did they get all of them in there? Because usually that's not what happens, you see. Usually that's not what happens. When they when they conquer something, they put a very small amount of people in there, probably less than 20 most of the time. And this time they didn't. This time they put a massive amount. So I can only assume that either they donated some units, because that's the thing. Usually, that's not what happens in Warband. In Bannerlord, that is what happens, where they donate a bunch of people from their army into the garrison, and that is actually a strategy that you can use in Bannerlord to weaken enemy factions. So, for example, if there's a castle, and you take that castle, and then the enemy takes it back, then they're going to donate units in there, they're going to make their army weaker to make the castle somewhat well defended but in actuality the castle is not not well defended in the least and you can basically go straight on into the castle again you can take it back and then you've eliminated all of those units in a safe ish environment and then the armies inevitably going to come back possibly they might they might not and then they'll take it back and then they'll donate units once again and rinse and repeat so generally that you can do that if you're facing an army that is extremely large and way, way, way too large for you to be able to deal with on, under your own steam. So you can use these kinds of underhanded tactics to do that if you want to. But in this game, that isn't actually what happens most of the time. 
Usually, as I say, if someone, if one of the enemy takes uh, takes something, you know, they take a castle or a town or something like that, they usually put maximum around 50 to 60 units, minimum 15, maybe 20, something like that. And so you're very easily able to just go straight on in, hit that uh, that wonderful surrender button uh, for the enemy, and then they basically just go, oh yes, please don't hurt us, and then they run away. And that's pretty much it. That's usually what happens. But in this case, they didn't. So I'm very, very surprised about that. And a little bit, um, well, not shocked, as it were. But I am kind of um, a bit worried about it, actually. So let's see. I'm going to give it to Nelag, I guess. going to give it to Nelag so we can get some more relation with him, I suppose. And uh, Gunda has now gone to a lower relation level as well. So we're going to see what we can do with him in a second. I'm actually... Oh, I didn't want to walk around the streets. I want to go into the tavern here real fast. Wandering Bard. Uh, yeah, these are not particularly good. And I can't buy anything here. Yeah, well, that's absolutely fine as well. Okay, so we've taken back Kudan. We took Nelag Castle. I guess what I'm going to have to do is I will have to go to Rindyar. I will have to go to Rindyar, I suppose. I don't see anything else. Nelag is here. Hopefully he's going to do a slightly better job than uh, Nuas, because obviously Nuas was... Um, I think he's got a slightly lower renown value, so his army capacity is pretty pretty low in comparison to Nelag, so that's a little bit of a problem. And, oh, wow, that's actually a very, very large vassal stationed in here kind of uh, kind of interesting to actually see them in here to be honest anyway let's just go straight on in and see what we can do it's one of these mm, yeah so there are as far as i can tell three castle layouts that i really do not like this is one of them yeah yeah this is one of them this is going to be very very harsh for a variety of reasons i think you'll probably see why but it might not be that bad because it is indeed the Kurgits. So, well, take from that what you will. But for me, I don't think the Kurgits are that dangerous. And as long as I don't fall off the ladder 10,000 times, I should be I should be okay. You know, should be fine. So let's just see what happens. We do have a bit of a respite from the archers. There are no archers on the right and the left side. Okay. I am very surprised. I would have expected to see them just clamoring to get up there, trying to make the most of their overwhelmingly good angles. They've got great angles here, you know? If the, if the archers had been on the sides there, we would be taking so much damage right now that I don't think we'd even be able to get inside. Let me actually just drop down here. Yes, I can. No invisible wall. Thank you very much. And uh, there we go. We can now get behind the enemy. And we can see what we can do. Uh, yeah, but this is... Okay, I think the Kurgits don't actually understand what is even uh, supposed to happen in this particular layout. Which is weird, because they should all share relatively similar AI, right? But that apparently is not the case in this in this particular situation. That's kind of weird. Um, yeah, you see those two like archery nest kind of things right there? That one over there, you see that? I, I, I can't really show you right now, but the one that I passed by just moments ago that one and this one over here they're supposed to have archers in yeah they're supposed to have archers in and basically what happens or what should happen is the enemy is supposed to shoot from those places and murder you as you climb the ladder that's usually how it would go in this particular layout but for some reason the Kurgits just decided that they wouldn't do that and there's there's not even anyone here look at this there's no one here. It's not like we killed them. They're just not here. It's very, very strange. Oh well, never mind. I guess that means it's better for us. Um, maybe maybe the vassal actually decided to tell them to do something different or whatever. I'm actually not entirely sure. That's, I, that's very weird because, as I say, usually the AI is going to be really good at defending these kinds of layouts because they have an overwhelming archer advantage in this case. They can very easily just place archers in these little nests on the side of the ladder and just have perfect angles to shoot behind the shields of your forces and it's going to be so easy for them but they didn't do that so I guess we'll just take uh, we'll take the W I guess because that is exactly what's going to happen now uh, we just have to cleave through a bunch of them 
and then we should be perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, you can see exactly why the Lancers are uh, easier to level up, because they basically just die in, in one hit, pretty much. They have very low, um, very low armor values as well. I mean, not very low, but they have lower armor values than the Swedian Knights, for example, and the Mamluks. So it's a lot easier for you to eliminate them. But on the flip side, of course, the Kurgits do have a much easier time of leveling them up. So I guess that does make a bit of a difference. But otherwise, we have a... What? what? We have a huge little... I, I don't even know. Huge little? No, that doesn't make sense. Anyway, they, we have a relatively large contingent of units just walking into the corner here. Okay. <laughs> I thought this kind of thing would only happen if there was, you know, like a mod that increases your battle size and stuff like that. And these layouts would just would not be... Um not be able to handle the increased amount of unit spawns but apparently not apparently this is just a, a d default native thing i don't know weird stuff going on in this particular siege but there we are we were able to take it we lost two units total but now we ooh, look at this oh yeah give me that give me all of these please there's a lot of really really good units here um, what else can I take, actually? Uh, I probably want to take... Uh, the Slave Driver, I guess. Or Serenade Horseman. Yeah, I'll take the Serenade Horseman. That sounds pretty good. Unfortunately, I cannot take any more. We can't go above the capacity. And there we have it. Okay, so we've taken this. I think I'm probably just going to defer appointment of a Lord for this one. And we are going to then move on. Shall I try and take Halmar? We could try to take Halmar, or we could go... Oh, yeah, it's a bit... This is this is very... Uh, mm. See, now, here's the thing. Because we're at war against the Swadians, this is obviously going to make things much, much more treacherous uh, for us to tread. Because if we take Halmar, for example, the Swadians are basically going to think to themselves, Ooh, a free town! And then they're going to go all the way over there with all of their units and just, well, very easily take it, possibly. So let's actually see what happens. Maybe, maybe, oh, actually, maybe we can take a Hun Castle. Ah, oh, it's a Siege Tower. Mm. Didn't really want to spend the time doing that, even though I did say that I wanted to do the Siege Towers much more often. But these kinds of situations call for faster action, in my opinion. Okay, so Swadia is attempting to take that back. That's, that's not a problem. As I say, I should be able to deal with it. Halmar is the real prize here. Uh, let's see. Okay, um, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a bit worried. A bit worried about where all the archers are, but they don't seem to really be doing that much. That much that is, uh, somewhat dangerous at least. They are moving around, but they're not really doing any damage. And maybe if we can just get into the battlements, then we'll be able to move behind them and do some serious damage, which would be nice.
Well, I think that seems to be it. I'm really, really surprised I was able to survive this entire encounter. The enemy literally had 323 units and they just chucked them all at us. And you can see the amount of casualties we had. This is exactly the reason why a lot of people say if you're going to be, you know, besieging against the Kurgits, it's going to be easy. It's going to be very, very easy for you. And it doesn't really matter. Like, yeah, obviously you're going to need some good units. I mean, I have, you know, 26 Huskals. I've got Vagia Knights, Swadian Knights. I've got some Vagia Marksmen as well, which are definitely, they're actually surprisingly helpful. So that's pretty good. And uh, that's definitely making a huge difference. If we had a bunch of tier twos, tier threes, we would never be able to do this kind of thing. So that is something to bear in mind if you're wanting to do this as well. All right, so wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's uh, let's get a caravan guard. They're going to become mercenary horsemen, I suppose, at some point in the future. Let's take a couple of horses, even though I don't really, yeah, don't really want those, I guess. But uh, yeah, otherwise, let's give this to Lord Gunder. He's relatively close by, I suppose. And let's go into the tavern because I would like to see if there is a companion here that we can maybe. Nope. Okay. Oh well, that was <laughs> that was quick, wasn't it? All right, so let me have a look, see here. I want to sell all of this. There we go. All right, so we've taken Halmar, and obviously Rindyar Castle is going to be taken by the Swadians, but that's actually not a big deal, as I say. If there's only one or two vassals taking it, I'm pretty sure they're not going to be able to place that many units in there anyway, so I will be able to take that back relatively simply. Now, here's the thing. The closer we move to Saranid territory, the more likely they will be to declare war. So we have to be a bit careful of that. But the Serenids, as far as I'm aware, are actually at war against the Rodox, because as you can see, they seem to have taken Almera Castle. Almera Castle is the nightmare siege, and I'm not looking forward to taking it, but we'll see what happens. Otherwise, Kudan, that is ours again, as you can quite clearly tell, and is not under siege yet. But I'm going to assume it will be kind of soon. I might want to take Randy Castle. Maybe I'll maybe I'll try and attack the, the Swadians or something like that. I'm not entirely sure, but we're going to see what happens in the next episode, possibly. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.